How can one man prevent a new dark age from starting with his friends? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we break down trade paperbacks in single issues and then we read them dramatically back to you. Don't forget all the alterations are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. Welcome to The Valiant, the first major team-up of the Valiant universe and the birth of a new era for them. Let me know in the comments down below which of these characters you want more information on. And don't forget to ask for Valiant at your local comic book store to follow their adventures yourself, or you can check them out at your favorite digital vendor. There is a hero known as the Eternal Warrior. He has been gifted with immortality, and he is one of the greatest warriors on the planet, honing his skills over centuries of battle and war and practice. When in danger, Earth calls on her eternal warrior to prevent calamities and mete out justice. And it is through the Geomancers that he receives the warnings and the messages. The Geomancers that he is sworn to protect in return for their knowledge as they are the only ones with an unbroken line to the mystics that are in tune with the voice of the planet. But there is one calamity that Jalad the Eternal Warrior can't stop, and that is the loss of his Geomancer. While he has sworn to protect him, there is an enemy that is too great for Jalad, one that will arrive and demand the sacrifice of the Geomancer and fling the world into a new dark age. This is Jalad's failure, forever to haunt him with the deaths of many, all due to his inability to protect them. Now the woman in front of us is Kay, the descendant of one of those geomancers, and she is trying to find her way in the world. She was nothing more than a simple publicist that couldn't even take care of a houseplant when she learned that she had the power to communicate with the planet Earth. And now, she is the only connection to the Earth that our heroes have. We now go to a man with nothing to live for, as far as anyone knows. His name is Bloodshot, and he has little nanites inside of him that heal him from any wound. The Rising Sun Agency has turned him into their warrior, and in order to get him to do what they want, they wipe out his memory and they implant new ones. He now has no idea who he really is, and he's out for his revenge on the Rising Sun Agency, the group that made him who he is today. He's doing this by working for the good guys. No more assassin work, no more mindless killing machine, but he's still as clueless as to his true identity. Galad knows it's time for his next battle with the creature that can defeat the Geomancers. So he is now asking for help from Auric, the keeper of the Man o' War suit. He was a soldier from the Roman days of true combat, abducted by aliens and forced into slave labor. He then led a rebellion against his alien masters and he stole their suit of armor, capable of incredible things. And he returned in the year 2015, where he now battles against the evils to protect the planet. A warrior misplaced from his own era. Auric asks Galad why he's telling him about his failures now, why inform him of these terrible losses, and Galad tells Auric because he feels that it is time to begin again, but this time he has his friends. This time he's going to get help. Galad is more right than he knows though because the greatest evil this world has ever seen has awoken and it's looking for Kay. Without realizing that the immortal enemy has awoken, Galad teams up with Ninjak, a ninja that is also an MI6 agent to find a way to open the box. An ancient locked box that Bloodshot found that they hope can be used against the immortal enemy. But in order to get in there, they need to get the Breaker to do it, an old man with the ability to open anything. But as they retrieve their target and begin to head back to the box, Galad and Ninjak get a message that they are too late. The immortal enemy has awoken. Back with Kay, a man in a bowler hat, white hair, and a cane approaches her. He has the appearance of one of the things that terrified her in her childhood. Mr. Flay, a story monster. He walks over to Kay and he tells her, Now, dearest princess, call me Mr. Flay, as his eyes glow bright with evil. She blasts him with her powers, yelling, You're not real! You're not real! But Mr. Flay is insistent as he recites the old children's tale. The little princess was so, so sad, the twinkling kingdom gone all dark. She looked outside but could not even see a spark. Kay falls to the ground, begging for this not to be real. The king had left her all by herself. The kingdom, once bustling, was silent and still. Then Mr. Flay's face splits open to reveal the monster within, the immortal enemy. And now that you're all alone, it's you that I must kill. She gets up and she runs into the forest telling herself, it's only a story, it's only a story. But she falls to the ground and the immortal enemy gets closer when suddenly his head is split open by Galad's axe. She was never alone. I awaited centuries for this. With Mr. Flay on the ground, Galad calls the Ninjak, now! The Ninjak can't move. Mr. Flay is using his worst fear against him to lock him in place. 
Galad turns his attention to the bizarre demon head that has Ninjak locked in place and begins to cut it up. Damn it, Ninjak! Snap out of it! Finally free of his worst fear, his mother. Ninjak gets his blades ready, and he begins to spin them around, cutting up more of Mr. Flay's tentacles. But the two warriors aren't enough, and they both get thrown aside like playthings to Mr. Flay. Kay sees them go down, and she flees into the forest again. There is no point in running, Kay. This has all happened before, and it will all happen again. It is the natural way of things. The Geomancer rises, and I react. She runs faster and faster until she reaches a road, and then she begins to run down the road. But back with Ninjak and Galad, Ninjak helps up his eternal friend. I failed again, Ninjak. Kay is doomed. Maybe not, Galad. So Ninjak calls up for help. Neville, deploy the weapon. Back with Kay, she runs as fast as she can, looking behind her, and she runs into a man. Bloodshot, standing there armed and ready. Get down. He begins to open fire on Mr. Flay, but Mr. Flay takes all of the bullets to his body and face before reaching out and grabbing Bloodshot by the throat. Bloodshot then takes his sword and he cuts off Mr. Flay's arm. He then tells Kay to move, because behind them is a truck filled with logs barreling for Mr. Flay. Bloodshot pushes Kay out of the way, losing his own arm in the process, and Mr. Flay is buried beneath the wreckage. He then helps up Kay and he begins to walk her away from the scene. Your arm, she exclaims. It's fine, I'll heal. As the two of them run off, Galad has gotten the rest of his reinforcements. All of the heroes in the Valiant universe have arrived. Well, well, Galad, you've made some friends. The immortal enemy states as he shows his true face, finally. Bloodshot and Kay make their way to an old mall that has been cleared out by MI6 while Bloodshot's arm heals back. They enter into the building and Kay uses her geomancy to look around and she tries to get a feeling of anything alive in the building. And that's when she notes, there's something weird about Bloodshot. Are you a robot? Not a robot. Back with her heroes, they bombard the immortal enemy over and over using all of their powers at their disposal. Until at last, it would appear that they've won and Galad steps forward to check on the body. When suddenly the immortal enemy gets up again and asks, are you done yet? He then gets up and unleashes hell on earth as our warrior's greatest fears come back to tear them down. Over with Bloodshot and Kay, they're snacking on beef jerky because Bloodshot needs to feed his nanites protein to get a continual healing effect. Curious about what the nanites are that are inside of our hero, she questions Bloodshot. What are those inside of you? He explains that he was made by Project Rising Sun, and he has no memory of his past. After they talk for a bit, Kay mentions that she can feel the nanites in there, but they feel like they don't belong. She begins to pull them out of Bloodshot, clean his system, but as she's about to turn him human again, she stops and tells him, Mr. Flay is coming. He has finished with the Eternal Warrior and his friends. But things might actually turn in the favor of our heroes soon enough, because the box that they retrieved the breaker for has been cracked. It turns out that the box was a message from Galad to Galad from the future. And he informs MI6 and Gate that Galad is the only one that can open the box. While they work their way to get Galad to the base, Bloodshot and Kay are running through the mall trying to stop Mr. Flay. But nothing can stop Mr. Flay as he snaps Bloodshot's neck around. He then walks up to Kay, ready to make the kill, when Bloodshot shoots Mr. Flay through the skull. Kay turns to him to see that his neck is still twisted around. Bloodshot, your neck! Hold on, he says, turning his own head back around. That's disgusting! Mr. Flay then gets back up. Well, aren't you resilient? Let's see what lurks in that little head of yours. Your past, your nightmares. And Bloodshot just stares at him. That trick isn't going to work on me. And he shoots Mr. Flay in the head again before running off with Kay. They run into the back room, where Kay realizes that it's time to stop. He's just going to keep chasing them. This is pointless. But Bloodshot tells her, this is what they were made for. He's a soldier and she's a geomancer. There isn't any use in crying about it. Up with Galad and Ninjak back at the gate base, they open the box to reveal a timer inside. A timer that says that it has five minutes left. And down with Bloodshot and Kay, Mr. Flay comes barreling through the wall where he spears Bloodshot through the stomach. Kay's had enough, and she begins to bring the entire earth against Mr. Flay as she begins to use her geomancer powers. She begins to throw everything at him, and he laughs. I can't believe that there's finally a geomancer with a spine. I've waited eons for one that's not going to cower in the end. But the thing about spines is that they can be broken, and he mortally wounds her across the stomach with a single finger. Bloodshot gets back up and he begins to open fire on Mr. Flay. But it's too late, as Mr. Flay just fades back into the ether. He only had one purpose, and it's done. 
Over with Galad and Ninjak, they're standing at the box, staring at the timer as it begins its final countdown. And back in the mall, Kay reaches up for Bloodshot. Your name is Ray Garrison. The Nanites told me when I looked into you. Ray is a much better name than Bloodshot. It rhymes with Kay. Back with Galad, tears begin to stream down his face as the box finally opens, and everyone looks in shock inside at the young girl that's asleep, the new Geomancer. Bloodshot holds the dying Kay close, and he apologizes. He was supposed to save her. He failed in his mission. But Kay holds her hands to his face. I don't think you were. I think this was supposed to happen. And those little robots? They shouldn't be there. I think I was supposed to save you, Ray. And she purges every nanite out of his system, revealing Ray Garrison, the man behind Bloodshot, as she dies in his arms. Our tale ends there. Galad took the new Geomancer to teach her the ways and keep the new Dark Age from starting. But he isn't really sure if they won or lost. They lost Kay, but they got a new Geomancer right then and there. And Bloodshot? No one's seen him since the incident. He took a baseball cap and he walked off. Ninjak wanted to find him, but Galad thought it was time for Bloodshot to get a little rest. He's earned it. The story doesn't end there though. If you want to follow Bloodshot, a new series was recently started called Bloodshot Reborn that explores his continued journey. And the Eternal Warrior now has a new purpose in guarding this young girl. Let us know in the comments down below who you would like more information on because the more I personally dive into the Valiant universe, the more I enjoy it. I also wanted to let you guys know that there's currently a groupies deal going on where you can get six Valiant trades and comics for $5. I'll put the link in the description down below, so check it out if you want to get into this world. It's the best time to do it. Well, that's it guys. I'm Benny the Comic Storian, and if you like this video, please give it a like. It means a lot to us, and I'll see you guys next time right here.